Greetings everyone. Tonight's topic will focus on manifesting love, love for one another, acknowledging our source of power, and casting out imagination and mastering our dreams and goals. Let us first identify the foundation of which love stands. We all have heard God is love, God is spirit, God is Jesus, and God is our Father. So let's fine tune. Since love is good and is a state of being, we can validate that God is the spirit of love and that this spirit lives in us and therefore it validates to be father of our existence and to fine tune Jesus gave us the truth of it all. He is the truth and the pathway to fulfilling righteousness. As we confirm that the truth is the foundation of love and that is the foundation in which should be instilled in our heart. We are his body in many parts, one to another. That should be enough to make everyone commit to being cordial to anyone they encounter. For the very reason that we have been made aware that God lives in everyone, even though everyone may not have accepted it yet, but once our hearts are changed, the world will be more peaceful and the love will spread abroad. So then our job is to spread the news. Let us recognize we were chosen and united with God through truth. Scripture says we should know the truth and it will set us free. Free meaning a peace of mind that we are worthy to be loved and we are worthy to love one another. Why? Because it's the right thing to do and it's not a hard thing to do. Some feel, oh, I need to make a drastic change in my lifestyle, well, to a point we do, but for the main point, it's having self-control and what we do in a pleasant manner. The main point is to love one another and keep our hearts pure. Scripture said, blesses the pure in heart, for we will see God where within us. These are effortless changes that will fine-tune our life and well-being. 1 John 2, John 1 through 3. Grace, mercy, and peace, which come from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, will continue to be with us who live in truth and love. Ephesians 3 and 20. Now all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power and work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. So once we build our foundation focally on love, our mindset will be strengthened from within. God cannot work efficiently in us, but we are not in his state of being. We are on point and pure in our hearts. Scripture says we see him work through us as well as others see him work in us. He do well where loves exist and the power is in ignited. Mark 12, 30, and 31. We must love the Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. 31. The second is equally important. Love our neighbors as ourselves. This is the greatest command. And let's not get caught up in things that are not important. That's why scripture clarifies that our righteousness is a filthy rags. Why? Because if our heart is not pure, everything else is null and void. The things that captivate our thoughts and leisure moments reveal much more about the priorities in our heart. The Apostle Paul instructed us, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, and pure, whatsoever things are lovely, good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. We have been blessed through faith to manifest our imaginations, but the thing to master is manifesting our thought process ideas and concepts which should not be contrary to the will of God. Our imaginations can be free when we align them with the promises of God. He promised us life and to have it more abundantly. If we are not living life on earth as it is in heaven, do not expect life to be in abundance. We cannot take life for granted. Some feel it's the lifestyle that matters most, but it's the purification of our heart that he measures and determines our motives. I'd like to go off talk for a moment and address how we're affected by the anointing of Christ. Psalms 45 and 7. We, 
who have loved righteousness and hates wickedness. Therefore God, our God, has anointed us with the oil of joy above anyone else. Luke 4 and 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us because he anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent us to proclaim that captives be released and recovery of the sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed. Oppressed is someone or people that is being oppressed is typically under someone else's control or rule and they are taken advantage of in verse 19 and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. So remember, when we are in the state of being of the Spirit of the Lord, which is the most important, self-control, because we are no longer have to imagine the coming of the Lord, but we can proclaim it. Thank you for listening.